We know there are many choices in Internet radio and the staff and host of L.A. Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is L.A. Talk Live. We are more than just talk. You gotta have what, 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 what's happening, everybody? It's your main man, Mr. Brookshire. And oh boy, it's so real. <laughs> Y'all know I'm back. And we are so real talking with you. Hey, 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 everybody. So you know like we always do, the way that we always do each and every time that we start a show, I got to tell each and every single one of you that I love each and every single one of you. Y'all know that, right? I love each and every single one of you royal folks because you got to remember without each and every single one of you, and I know I'm saying each and every single one of you because I want you to know that I'm talking directly to you. If it was not for you coming on this show with us, me and my co-host, Miss Lizanna Smith, we would not be able to be here. We would not even want to be here, actually, (laughs) if we did not have you in the house. So without any further ado, like I always do, I want to bring straight into the house my beautiful co-host, the one and only Miss Lizanna Smith. What up, what up, what up? Welcome. What's going down? It's real talk with Brooke Shia. Yes, it is, and we are getting it in. How yeah, are you? I'm fantastic. I'm yeah. happy to be here today. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I see you wearing the red, white, and blue. You know, you know. Uh, beautiful yeah. for space. Do I do I put my hand on my uh? <laughs> of yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I hear that musical voice. Okay. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm I'm awesome. You know, I mean. This is a good day to be in LA. Yes. You know, definitely. we got the Emmys popping right I now. I know. We, in fact, yes. we, we're supposed to be on the red carpet right now. Well, so that's. Know- Look, yeah. I already got that written down. We're going to be holding down it's some things absolutely. next year. The word shows. It's, it's all happening. It's all manifesting. It's all Shh. You know, just know y'all kind of seeing some of the before the scenes. Right. But this is what's popping. This, so is, where, this is how everything has a start, everything right? Everything is starting. Everything has a starting everything point. Everything is happening. Yeah, it, it does. And this is the beginning. And there's so much more. And again, you know, it, it, it is a blessing to see the future. Because again, what's so great about uh, imagination and faith is that you can see what can happen. And if we can see you it. You got to see the unseen. We can achieve it. It. That's right. You know what? I want to tell a quick little story. Please have you tell ever a quick story. Have you ever heard a little story of the of the chicken hawk? I don't know if I've heard the story <laughs> of the chicken hawk. So please tell me. Let me tell you the story. Now this is an inspirational story, really quick, for all y'all folks out there of the chicken hawk story. And then we're going to be going in straight into an amazing guest that we're having on to the show. Uh, we're going to be bringing into the house right after our little songy song. But it's the, the chicken hawk. The chicken hawk. We're going to talk, talk about, about the, 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 the story of knowing who you are. This is just a quick little sidebar for all y'all out there, because y'all know I'm the motivational speaker here, me and Miss Lizanna Smith. We like to encourage y'all folks. So it's all about knowing who you are. So the quick little story comes from the chicken hawk. Okay. okay. It was about this little, this farmer. Okay. Let's see, long story short, this farmer found this, um, this very big egg, right? He found this egg that was bigger than most of the other eggs. Okay. And so he decided to take the egg and put it in with the other chickens, right? Fair enough. So finally, the, the egg ended he up... He just figured it was a chicken egg. He, he just found it was a chicken egg, but it was a little yeah. bit different. So finally, okay. what he decided to do was he went and, and, and put it in with the chickens, and then the egg finally ended up hatching. Okay. So of course, the egg hatched, and of course, it was not a chicken. Just so oh. happened, it ended up being a hawk. A baby hawk that was in the egg. And so, of course, Mm. the chickens come up, you know, come up and they come up to the the little hawk and they're like, okay, we're going to show this little joker how to to maneuver. Exactly. So, of course, you know, they take him under his wing. They start showing him how to act like a chicken, how to move his head like a chicken, how to walk like a chicken. Eat that corn off the ground. How to eat the corn off the ground. He's a chicken, right? eating that feed. So, a little time go by, right? A little time go by and he looks up in the sky and he sees this big animal flying in the air and he's just like oh my god it's a bird it's a plane what 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 is that in the air and the Mm. other chicken says oh that ain't nobody but that old hawk he just thinking he all that don't worry about him just stay down here with us chickens hang out with us hang out with the chickens he's just like oh my god you know like it's just amazing it's like don't worry about he's just showing off so a little more time goes by he goes on about his business the chickens say come on keep being a chicken that's what you need to be Never realizing who he is. A little more time goes by and, uh, you know, he looks up and he sees another sign of this big animal in the air. And he's like, oh, my God, what, what, what is that? And then the chickens come and say, boy, don't listen. That ain't nobody but that daggone hawk. He's mm. just trying to show off, trying to be act like he all that. Don't worry about the don't hawk. Don't worry. Keep out here with us chickens. That's right. Stay That's, with us chickens. This is what you are. You so a chicken. finally, be a chicken. he ends up dying, not knowing oh, who he is, the no. hawk. 
not knowing all the potential that's on the inside of him. Because one thing I would always tell each and every single one of you before we go to our little quick songy song is that most of the time people around you know your greatness before you do. Yes. And so if you don't realize who you are, and you know, we talked about this on many shows, if you don't realize who you are, a lot of times everyone else won't tell you who you are. Wow. Either. So remember who you are. You are a hawk. You are not a chicken, people. Trust you are those able, instincts. yes, to fly Trust over that circumstances. Voice inside you. Know who you are and know build up on are. that. You are the chick. No, you aren't the chicken. You are the hawk, not the you chicken. You are the hawk. Let the yes. chickens be with the chicken. <laughs> Let the chickens be with the chickens. You fly in that sky. I can concur with and that. And see everything below. Yes. So what we're going to do really quickly, quick, quick, we're going to take you straight into a little song of the song right here on LA Talk Live, right here on Real Talk of Brookshire, of course, with my co-host, Miss Susanna Smith. And then we're going to come back in with our special guest right He's here. special. Yes, on LA Talk Woo! Live and Love 92.3. I'm your main man, Mr. Brookshire. We'll be right back right with our back. guest. Oh, 
What's going down, everybody? What's so live? We're so back. What's happening? I'm your main man, Mr. Brookshire. And of course, I'm in here with my beautiful co host, Miss Lazanna Smith. How are you doing? You in darling? here. I'm in here. You up in here. I'm up in here. So, without any further ado, we want to take you straight into a very special guest that we have calling into the phone line. I mean, I just got a chance to really get to know this young man. I mean, haven't got a chance to really get to know him as much as I will for the future, but I definitely got a chance to know some of the other co stars that are on the show with him and just see that he's making history with the half and the half knots this man is definitely blazing a trail leaving a mark and i just want to welcome a very special welcome into our studio none other than mr gavin gavin houston how are you sir hey, thank you thank you are you in the house my brother thank you uh, say that again i'm sorry i'm just making sure that you was here are you here I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm in the house. That's what's up, We're man. We're glad to have you, Gavin. Yes, yes we you, are. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Welcome, welcome into the show. So, like we always do, man, of course, we just want to uh-huh. thank you, of course, for being in the house and being candid. But we just want to get to know you a little bit. Talk a little bit about just you. Just a little. It's just going to be all about you. How'd that feel? We're just going to have fun. Oh, yeah. Right. Can we get to know you? Can your fans get to yeah, know you? Yeah, like, we just, we just want to get to know, know you. We want right. to know the man right. behind right. the man. Right. The man behind okay. the man. Okay. So any, yes, no, we're we, we, we gonna get into it, brother. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we get into it. Yes, we just met. Yes, I we know, about, right? The yeah. show is called Real Talk with Brookshire. So you we know, the real you talk. already know you already how that's know. gonna go down. That's right. So, my brother, really quick, let's just go ahead and start off for the audience that doesn't really know who you are, haven't necessarily met sure. you before. Yes. Uh, where are you from? How did all this get started? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm actually from. Uh, Originally, my uh, parents are Guyanese, and which was part Brazilian, and uh, we're from Teaneck, New Jersey, a small town in New Jersey. Oh wow! And um, my mom was actually actually used to model, and uh, and my sister were they were both models, both Uh-oh. Tall, beautiful, they're both five eleven. Oh wow! So Amazonian, yeah, so, right? Man, that's like that? that's Amazon, you know. I mean, I'm I'm five two and a half, five four in some heels, maybe five five. So I mean, five eleven without any heels, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, that yeah, is. They were, yeah, they were they were definitely tall. And um, my sister wanted to get into modeling, and my friends was actually uh, my dad was actually friends with Keisha Knight Pulliam's mm. mom. Okay. And uh, so they moms, they, they uh, Keisha Knight Pulliam's mom introduced my dad to her manager. Okay. So they brought my sister. And since I was in school, they just decided to just bring me along just to come with them. Uh Uh-oh. And uh, when we got, uh (laughs) uh-oh. So when I I got there with my sister, they gave me something to read. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, they wanted to end up representing me and not my sister. Wow. Oh, wow. That's how I got started. It kind of, I fell into it just by accident. And then uh, my first job... Um, was on the Cosby Show. Oh! And, uh, and I got to dance with uh, Felicia Rashad and meet Bill Cosby and just meet everybody there. And from that point on, I was hooked. Wow. Okay, okay wait, wait. Yeah. I gotta yeah, ask yeah, a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead now. Okay, wait. So your sister was supposed to get this audition and then you got the audition instead and you actually booked the job. I mean, how long was it before she talked to you again? <laughs> Well, my sister was supposed to get the manager. So oh, initially okay, this was for the manager who she wanted to represent. Uh, and, you know, my sister was okay with it, I, I guess. So, uh, <laughs> she hates me a little bit as a big sister. But, right. But, uh, yeah. But she ended up, it ended up working itself out. Okay. <laughs> That's what's up. That's refreshing. So tell us, how was it working with Mr. Cosby, like that experience? Now, and how old were you again when you did that again? I was 10 or 11 years old. 10 or nice. 11. Good so for you. Were you he able... Was he was so friendly. Did okay. you eat Jell-O on set? <laughs> Jell-O pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. You know, you talk about Cosby and then Jell-O when you were you know, 10. I mean... Jell-O pudding on set for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, no. <laughs> you know, no good stories? He was stories. very friendly and... I actually just sat down a few times and just watched him work, and a lot oh, wow. of the things that he was doing was just off the off the cuff, right off the top of his head, and he would go off script, and he was just brilliant, and the cast knew how to work with him mm. whenever he did that, and so uh, and he just everybody just looked like they were having so much fun, right? So I was just and I saw that, and I got we were in front of a live studio audience. I saw the effect it had on the audience. Everybody mm. was just so happy and having so much fun. I was like, I want to do that. I want to huh. be a part of that. 
Huh, so that's where the bug now, started. Now, at such a young age, I mean, what tips did you pick up from someone who's been such a legend in the industry right. like a Bill Cosby? Mm-hmm. Have fun. Okay. Like, huh. you know, it's a, it's just, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. So you have to have fun. Um, and I, and I realized that by the way he worked. Hmm. Um, I mean, he worked, he worked extremely hard, but you know, it's, it's teaching yourself how to care and not to care. The hmm. Caring is in the preparation and the not caring is in being able to let go. The execution. Right. execution. And you know, you have that confidence because you know, you did the work. So. Right. Um, right. Hmm. You know, I think in a lot of ways, hard work always, will beat out talent most, mm. most of the time. That's know? a good point, actually. That's a really good yeah. point. So really? now I got some information on you, brother, mm. that uh, you Uh-oh. were Mr. Uh-oh. University at Florida State 2000. 2000. How, how does someone become Mr. University? I mean, you look like a Mr. University, but like, how does that actually oh, right. happen? Wow. I, you know, it's a, it's a Mr. First, down there, you got to be real careful. I was going to say... Yes. University of oh, yes. and, and did I say the and, wrong one? And, and, and it's okay. And you better, I saw you wait, looking Gavin, at me, Lizanna. Gavin, wait a minute before you say anything. I have to let you know, full disclosure, I am a Seminole. So oh. just for the record, we oh, gonna be good. Know, he did. He did. I, and I and I did. And I and I he, he saw me. He saw right, me I looking saw at him because I was like, wait a minute, it's about to be a problem. Right, right, right. Yeah. My bad, brother. Was it the it's, wrong one? That college football, especially in in the south texas florida and california that I mean you know rivalry schools are serious yeah so i can dig in that. florida you know you you draw the enemy lines are drawn very clear so we don't want to put you in the enemy's oh, yeah. territory so well i'm you know we gonna we gonna we, we gonna, gonna, gonna lead gonna out let that go. we gonna let that but he was in the swamp <laughs> so he was okay. in the swamp so talk about what it was like to be mr universe in the swamp yes <laughs> <laughs> she's, com- she's coming for you uh, 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 gavin she's coming was, for you uh, when i was a freshman I actually, uh, I, I saw a sign on the dorm, you know, I didn't know how to cook, I didn't know how to do anything. There was a sign saying, you know, sorority needs a, a few good men, free food, lunch, <laughs> and pay. That is the way okay. to get a guy, oh God, a student, exactly. Yeah, uh, hello. So I started to work at a sorority house as a busboy mm. when I was a freshman, and then they nominated me to do it and sponsored me to do it. So it was all, again, I was thrown into it, and then, you know, for me, I'm like, okay, it's, it's it's a lot of it was perform like a performance to me in terms of the interviewing the questions and everything like that so right. went through it and uh, and ended up winning. So what oh, does wow. that mean? What did it entail? What what did you? What were your responsibilities after that? Mm. Oh wow, uh, my you, responsibilities yeah. were <laughs> Mr. I think Universe. A few speaking. This is a while back, you know. Right. But not too long, but it was a while back. Because <laughs> I was in college. Not just but, the other uh, day. It, we know. It was, like, it was just the other day. Right. It was just <laughs> Too the other low. day. Yeah, exactly. that's what I meant. A while back, like last. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, but, exactly. Um, <laughs> but it entailed going around doing speaking engagements, um, as well as uh, in terms of there were some questions that they asked right off the cuff. There was a like a dramatic uh, thing that I had to do in terms of like a, a talent. I think I like danced or did something. Oh. It was, it was crazy. Something I would probably you know in college you like you. You do things, and then as you get older, it's like, wow, I dance on a stage, hmm, like that. Like it was, a, it was a choreographed dance. But right. I was just like, no, I wouldn't do that now. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> free, at least. That's Not just one of those free. college things <laughs> that right, you gotta do. I mean, mm-hmm. when you in college, you just do a whole bunch of just fun stuff. Fun stuff. And speaking of fun, fun stuff, stuff, you were also you know, a gymnastics, yeah, right? This... Gymnastics. Fun. You did something gymnastics, with you did yeah. something with gymnastics as well, correct? I was yes, yeah, so I was deep in the gymnastics um, since I was like five or six years old. So I think that also helped me because I was when you went to meets, there were crowds there. Right. At one point, I was ranked number two in the state. Get out of here. Seven in the region. Wow. So and, I guess uh, I won't say nothing about my gymnastics did. experience then, since you uh, mm. since you got all that. I won't. I'll leave mine mm. out. Okay, go Can ahead. Can you backflip, Brookshire? <laughs> I we used to be called the tumble, uh, uh, so the flip I'm master. Still, still doing handstand push-ups like that. Oh wow. Never leaves you. Oh wow, that's what's up. Yeah, that sounds kind of hot. Like, Do you have that on YouTube saying, somewhere? Like, I used to performing in front of like, an, like a crowd, you know, mm. and um, from those meets, and I used to be so nervous. So what was your specialty like when you were out there? What did you? What was your exercise? Did you do everything, or were you just? What, what, I what did, did you do? I did everything. My, I we did all events, but um, 
the one I did the best on was the floor exercise. Oh, so tumbling, tumbling. and doing things like that. Okay. Yeah. Do you still yeah. have it? Like, do you still got the? Can you still do a back tuck or a back handspring or still a full? Still do a standing back tuck, back handsprings, handstand pushups. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm a member of a gymnastics gym here, and I go to. Uh, well, not here, but in LA. But when I, and I go to, I go there uh, a couple of times. Just you know, just doing some work. If Get I out can, of here. Just trying to keep up with the flexibility. That's actually yeah. pretty good. You know, yeah, you got to let me know where you go because I would definitely like to get back into it a little bit still. I, I still just can... like to watch. Right, right. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And, you know, when I, when I, after shooting our second season, I'm actually planning to go back. And I used to do martial arts for a while. And oh, there's a martial right. arts facility out here that I want to get involved in, which is more film based. So you work on mm. harnesses, you do a lot of. A lot of tumbling. I mean, they have trampolines and a lot of and a lot of weapons and things like that. Talking so about in North Hollywood. So cool. In North Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, on extreme. XMA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the Blue Power Ranger that was on a mm. season of Blue Power Rangers, not not Najee Detej that was on Samurai, but another one in an earlier season. He actually owns that gym. I used to actually train there really? years and years ago. It's kind of like off of Lincolnshire, if I think you're talking about. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love mm-hmm. that. I, I went in there the other day and I, I got a little tour and I was like oh my gosh I'm doing this when I come back yeah and yeah yeah actually mm-hmm, for me I I would love to do a, an action film at some point mm, that sounds that's fun and that would use a lot of your skills which is pretty fantastic yeah that definitely would so now you're a father too correct yes I am you yes, are tell us a little bit about fatherhood father. what is that for you because again you know I know Oprah and a lot of other people are talking about the epidemic about fatherless kids and you know millions of kids are growing up without a daddy mm-hmm. what does fatherhood mean to you what is what is that for you it means a lot you know it, it definitely uh, changes you mm-hmm. you know and um, you know from my situation was different where uh, it was I it was with someone who I was with in college and then I, I went away and she went away and I only knew about my daughter when she was four or five years old. Oh, wow. So, so oh, I, wow. Didn't, I didn't know of her for a long time. And, you know, I just went, once I found out and it was just, it, I couldn't, I couldn't not be in involved. And um, ever since becoming involved, I mean, it's just been an amazing experience and it's so wow. fulfilling to also have someone who looks at you looks up to you and who you have someone higher than yourself to live to live for right how Um, is that experience like meeting your child for the first time in four years like was it an immediate bonding experience did you have to get to like get connected with her where you heard a little bit what was that for you when you first Um, found out or knew you know i always i always think you know god always gives you what you can handle right Mm. and uh you know it's not always in our time but in his so Mm. i i just embraced it and you know was just thankful for this moment right here right now and just and she as well i think it's the same way it's like it never happened wow and you know maybe there were certain things that i needed to certain ways i needed to grow and that's why i only came in at that point you know Mm. so i i don't I don't sense. look at it as, you know, it's, it's, sometimes I try not to think about how you start, but just how yes, you finish. You absolutely. Know? Right. Okay. Absolutely. So going back to your career, you know, because you were on the Cosby show um, at 10 years old and a lot of mm-hmm. um, child actors kind of get caught up and right. then they stay there. Yes. Right. So how mm-hmm. were you able to move through that whole idea of getting typecasted, staying as a child actor, and then actually being able to maintain a career in the entertainment industry. Well, I I left it for a while. I did that. It was a quick a quick uh, episode or two of the Cosby Show, and then mm. and then I was just doing a lot of co- commercials. And I remember I remember I did I was in high school and I kept doing a lot of commercials and and a lot of theater off Broadway and things like that. Uh-oh. And uh, I remember I didn't get a role on Moesha to play her boyfriend. And then I was done. I was done. I was like, that's it. You're like, what? They Mm. won't let me be Brandy's man? Forget (laughs) this. You know what? I'm Brandy's man. They can't see that? Right. I I don't know why that did it. But then I was like, okay, I guess it's over. And I went to college, Mm. um, pre-med. And then that changed into physical therapy. And then, uh, you know, one day I was running stadium steps. I saw an audition posted. And I was like, I want to go audition. And I went to audition and got the part. 
and got in the theater program, and then I just knew from that point on I would never let, let it go again. That's where you were again, supposed to be. You know? hmm. Now, what did your parents say? Because, I mean, I know having a Caribbean background myself, um, you mm. were in the field that they expected you to be in because you were going in the medical field. Right. And a lot of Caribbean parents, that's where they want you to be, <laughs> in the medical field. So now you go to this audition, and you're thinking, okay, I just met the love of my life, which is theater and acting. Right. And... At some point, you got to call your mom and dad or see them in person mm-hmm. and say, uh, guess what? So I decided I'm going to be an actor right. for the rest of my life. <laughs> what was that conversation like? Yes. Well, I, you know, the same way the truth. I, I kind of <laughs> fell into <laughs> acting myself. I kind of pushed my parents into it accidentally as well. Uh-huh. I had a, a show, it was a Shakespeare show, it was okay. Richard III. And I had the uh, huge fight scenes and I was, uh, you know, had so much to do with this in the show and I invited my dad. It was our last show and it was on Father's Day. And he thought I was gonna be sitting next to him in the audience. Mm. And so he <laughs> oh, didn't no. I was in it. <laughs> so like, when he, he didn't know what was going on, he was in his seat. And so he watched the whole thing and watched what I did. And um and after that he gave me his blessing. Because he just oh. saw how serious I was and and I guess maybe he saw something. Um and you know, when I got that then I went up to New York and then started just the ball started rolling with uh, with other work now do you believe so with with New York do you do you really believe that the grind if you can make it there you can make it anywhere did, did that does that apply to you how, how what's your what's your feeling about that that saying if you can hmm. make it there you can make it anywhere no it, I think I think it's true in the sense that there is major talent there that still hasn't been discovered hmm. and so and there's few jobs on television there so everybody goes out for those jobs. There's so much theater. Right. And I feel like, you know, the, the real art of this is, is, is theater, you know. And so I do feel like if you can make it there with the level of competition that's out there. Right. Yeah, theater actors are always working. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, always working. And I, I feel like they just kill it when it comes to television and film. Mm. And the work ethic is there already. So uh, having a background, I think, in theater, I think is the best is the the best teaching that you can have coming into acting because that is what true acting is. I concur. Theater based. Yeah, I I definitely agree. You know, and where Hollywood is, you know, more looks and more, you know, sometimes people fall in like, oh, they're on a reality show and all now they're this lead of this show. You know, it's just, right. There could be a little bit different elements involved, you know, as opposed to ones who just, because, you know, if you're doing theater, the money is different. It's not as much. And right. You're just grinding out shows. That's right. You're consistently beating on your craft. Mm-hmm. So I do think if you can if you can make it there, you could definitely make it out here. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I would think. And that's why all the, a lot of the greats always return back to Broadway. Right. Where they, they come from, they were plucked from Broadway. I mean. That's true. When you think about it. That's do really you have true. a preference between theater acting and on-screen acting, film, television? Theater. Theater. Oh, wow. Theater will always be my preference just because it's alive. Mm. It's not pre-taped. It's not in, in front of like a, a crew. I mean, I try to use all the surroundings around me as my audience kind of, but it's it's just alive. You get, they'll laugh at things that maybe you didn't expect. Mm. Something will happen that, uh, and you just have to react in that moment and be honest and be real about it. It's not like, okay, well, we'll just do another take and make sure to get it perfect. Hmm. For them, to, you know, it's 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 sometimes some of the best scenes are a lot of um, accidents, honest accidents that were just captured. Wow, I yeah, can dig but that. They're real. That's hmm. why it's just fantastic. So let me ask you this, because it's always a question that I wonder. It's great whenever we see you grinding and we see you on TV and all that stuff is amazing. But for the millions of people that are on that day to day grind, having to work a regular job and still trying to act or having to do some, you know, take care, you know, raise a family and still trying to pursue their career. Tell us a little bit about maybe the challenges that you've con- gone through, even if it's let's let's talk specifically about maybe jealousy. You're on a show now. Have you dealt with any type of jealousy in your challenges? People popping about the woodworks, demanding I- Knew him things. when. This is my right. friend. How we has that been? Cousins. You know, for you, uh, <laughs> yeah. How's that been for you? You know, people have reached out for sure. I, I, I don't. I guess I don't get that same um, because the people in my circle know me and know my work ethic mm-hmm. and know my that I'm where I'm rooted and that I'm grounded and that I'm just. I don't look at it like, 
you know, it's so funny. Someone the other day was like, oh, how is it being a celebrity? I was like, I'm just an employed actor. Yeah. Like, right. Right now, you know, right. the match is struck and I have to keep it lit. I know, that's right. Me, I have, like, all I have right now is an opportunity and a responsibility, so I have to work harder to keep it going. I know? think Mario right. Lopez some, said something like, it's a constant temp job. It's, you know, you're working, <laughs> but then you don't yeah. know how long your contract you is going to be for, know. so you got to be ready. You don't know. Wow. Things get, things get canceled. Things get, I that's mean, right. all you have right now is an opportunity, and it's, it's what you do with it. Yes. You know? So, um, and I, I don't know. I haven't, or at least not to my face, of people said anything like in terms of jealousy but one thing that has that is truly inspiring is are the fans and the right. people that have reached out to me mm. and what certain things and certain performances that i've done what it's meant to them mm. and that's just the reminder of why you do it you know and it's exciting it's, i think it was like michael kane who once said uh the acting i'll do for free it's the waiting they have to pay me for mm. you know it's, I love it's, it. the acting is just so good and it's just so so therapeutic to the actor right and then as well the effect it has on people and when they give you that feedback and they were changed or moved or inspired or they learned something that i mean that's what it's about that's that's the that's the paycheck that's definitely interesting. Everybody, really quick, just a, just a quick uh, identification. We're right here, still right here, live right here on Real Talker Brookshire. We are on the phone lines with Gavin Houston from Halves and the Half Not, still right here in the studio. So what we're going to do is we're going to migrate into the show because I'm excited to know how was your experience. So, of course, how many auditions did you have to go through? Tell us about this introduction process. How did you get to the, the casting let, let introduce us to how oh, this process it's a, happened. It's a phenomenal story, especially to any actor coming up. And it's it's truly why you, you just have to keep believing. Because I was actually I parted ways with my manager and then was dropped with my from my agent oh, all wow. at once. Oh wow. So all at once I had nothing. And I was just it, it bothered me for a little while. I was depressed for maybe a few days. And you know, my manager uh at the time said you know, just take six months off, take six months off, come Dang. back to the, you know, <laughs> and I just, and I, and then I got dropped by the agent. So, and I just, no. I just believed too much. And I just said, you know what? I can't, I know what my heart feels yes. and I can't give someone that much control over Absolutely. my career. Right. And this, this train has to keep going to the destination. Yep. Right. And I'm not going to tell someone when to, when, you know, I'm not going to let someone tell me when to stop. Right. So, Immediately got on the grind, started getting new headshots, started just doing manager showcases, started, I did just, I just went on online and just saw every management, who they represented, just started emailing everybody. And uh, some people started to get back to me. Oh, wow. And then I started to take meetings. And there was one guy who I really, really liked. And uh, I went with him. And he, this role that was out was, uh, had been out since, I think October, and they were trying to cast it in New York, Atlanta, and L.A. Uh -huh. I think by this time it was January, and he went, this particular guy went back to the old breakdowns, and he huh. found out about this thing that had still not been cast. What? He submitted me for it. What? And um, it's just so funny because I was in the building that they were casting it a week before, and this girl got on the elevator, and I asked her what she auditioned for, and she said, the haves and the have-nots. Mm. Oh, man, I wish... I wish I, and I was like, what is that? He's like, it's a Tyler Perry show. And I was like, I wish I could audition for Tyler Perry. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> right. And then the and next it, week, it, you it were in that same building and, um, auditioning. Yeah, and then I, have have I, had the, I had the audition, audition for two parts, actually. Mm. And then uh, the next, in the next few days, I got called and told that I was going to be flown down to Atlanta to screen test in front of Tyler Perry. Uh oh. Okay, wait. And that pause. was it for me. I pause. was just like, all right. I'm How does that feel? Excited. However, this goes, I'm already just excited for that. Can you, can, know, can you go you know. there? Like, of, of, because not everybody gets that opportunity to get a phone call to say you're going to be getting a screen test in front of Mr. Tyler Perry. What do you right. think when that happens? How does your body feel? What are you thinking, like, in this moment? Oh, it was a, it was a, like a, a shiver. It was almost, it's, you know, you get so many. You just don't hear nothing sometimes. You get so much rejection that yes. when something like that happens, like I said, it was already a victory for me. Right. Like whatever happened after that, the fact that out of all since October that they've been casting it in all these in New York, LA and Atlanta, that they saw enough in my tape and just mm -hmm. my tape to be like, We wanna bring him here to meet 
and well to audition for Mr. Perry, and that was it. I was just I was just so excited. And wow. then more nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to audition in front of Tyler Perry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now, did you have, was he actually at the audition when you went in? He, and let me tell you, I I have so much respect for this man in terms of his work ethic <laughs> and who he is. Yes. Uh, he was on his lot shooting, um, I think, Medea's Christmas, which comes out oh, wow. um, around Christmas. And he was still in makeup. Oh. And on his, on his break, he was auditioning people for his show that had to be and, funny uh, so he sat way in far in the back <laughs> and they, they put a light on us that's so amazing him, but... oh okay 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 yeah Wow. Awesome, awesome. So now, how many auditions did you have to go through? Because I know when Tyler came, he was saying about six or seven auditions that he had to go through. And actually, was how was it for you? Seven. He had to go through like six That's or funny, seven. That's funny because I auditioned for Tyler's part too. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I didn't know <laughs> on the on the it wasn't on the plane ride. I didn't know firmly which which there were two characters, which one I was auditioning for, and there were numerous scripts. So I just. I didn't know, and they said you're gonna, you might, you're gonna use this one. You might use this one. You might use the other one. I, I wasn't sure, so I just learned all of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was wow. So it was, it was three auditions. That's, no, two auditions. Yeah, it was one here in L.A. and then one in Atlanta. And I literally just went in ridiculously ready. Mm. And um, it's funny because there's an interesting story even behind the audition process that I go, I play a therapist. Right. And we got there the same day. So I flew in my suit. It was all wrinkled. Well, a shirt and tie, I think I had. It was so wrinkled when I got there. And um, and I was nervous. And they had all, they had about seven other guys from my part. And wow. I was late. I flew there last minute. So I had to share a room with another girl who was auditioning for something else. Mm. And in my room, she had a nervous breakdown. No. And so... I was just like, I, so I couldn't really prepare, and I started just <laughs> talking to her. We we hugged, we prayed, we just, we just kind of talked about everything and went through it. So in a sense, I was almost being in the character already. Right, and, right, right. Um, yeah, it's, it's right. Crazy. And you know what's funny? She was like, "Let's let's run your stuff," and I was like, in terms of reading my lines, I was like, "Okay." And she uh, she actually gave me a note. To do like to try something, and I was like, you know what? I kind of, I kind of actually like that. Mm. And it's funny because he tested me. I went in once for Mr. Perry, then they called me back in and had me do a chemistry test with um, Angela, who, who plays Veronica on the show, mm-hmm. uh, who plays my mother. And uh, they had us read together. And that note that she gave me saved my life because I forgot my first line. Oh and so wow! I was able to do it, and then I just got it, and it all came in. What was the back. note she gave yeah. you? Yeah. Laugh. Ah, that <laughs> Again, was the advice. But you know what's so funny? Look at her and laugh. It, and I, I forgot my line. I looked up at her and I started laughing. And then what and happened? It all came to and me. Everything came back. Oh. And you know what's so funny is, you know, you were just saying earlier, Gavin, about how that's how Bill Cosby is when he acts, right? right. That he's always laughing and having fun and really just kind of yeah. being in the moment. And so in a sense, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's something to that. So actors out there, we want you to take that cue. That have is a fun great piece of advice. And, and just laugh yeah. and, and really just get into your characters and enjoy what you're doing. Awesome. So yeah, now you get you the call. To. You get the call, you got the job. Tell us, take us there. Mm-hmm. You got the role. Mm. I was, uh, I was actually working on a, doing an Old Navy commercial with Jennifer Love Hewitt. Okay. At the time, <laughs> and I was at the on set, and I knew that. Um, I actually, I, I, after my audition, they pulled me aside and, and said that they really liked what I did, and mm. then I, I knew, um, I found out this. I guess two days later that I that I got it. And when I got that call, it just was like it just it literally, I it just made me tear up just because wow. of the journey of it in terms of mm. not having any representation, how everything, but it it had to all go down that way. It had right. to happen. Isn't that something? You know, something? and sometimes it's 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 darkest before the dawn. Yes. Yeah. You know, but you just have to keep believing in it. And Good just, point. so all of that, and um. You know, it just it it all just came together. So I was just so happy. So you meet the cast, so the cast mm-hmm. members. Okay, you you meet the rest of the group. Everybody's picked. This is the crew for the haves and half nots. How does the chemistry work out once you know who's going to be on set? You start working with people. This is this is the this is the future. What what happens? And then? who makes you the most starstruck? Right. <laughs> 
you're like, oh my gosh, I'm working with John him. Schneider first. That that that's easy because John Schneider. I had his toy. Uh, I was playing when he was on Dukes of Hazard. Right. I, I, was, I was playing with the General Lee and his action figure while watching the TV. Wow. I mean, who would know that years later I'll be doing it? You do a show with, with him. him, right? Isn't that crazy? Just when you think about it, right? Um, and it's funny because. Peter Paros, who plays David, or it was also it was my father on the show. Right. I've known him. I I I've known him for years since uh, New York because I worked on Guiding Light and he was on As the World Turns. Right. And and I just for some reason in the last year kept running into him, and uh, we were just been auditioning, auditioning, and I we were like, well, one of these we'll get one of these, and one of these will come, and uh, you know, and we just converse for a little bit before, you know, after our auditions and then leave. We would always like just try to boost up the other one. And then here it is, you know, boom, we got it, and you know, we're together as father and son. Right. Uh, and it was Go great. Figure. Everybody from the cast. It's funny because I saw Tyler um, Levy on the plane mm-hmm. initially, and it, which is why he's so perfect to play the character. <laughs> he had sunglasses on initially. I was like, who is this dude with sunglasses on inside? <laughs> and then. And then, and then because <laughs> you know, I I never really seen that till since I until I came out to L. A. Right, right. You know, and you know, I'm talking <laughs> to real people. LA I feel like I'm talking to Darth Vader. Right, 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 right. right. Luke, I'm your father. <laughs> so I was like, and then I started talking to him, figured out who he was, uh-huh. and uh, we hit it off since then. It was just funny, and I always clowned him about that. Wow. Okay, he's, so now he's too cool for school with sunglasses on inside, like he's P. Diddy. Right on the show, <laughs> you're playing a therapist. So now you play a therapist to uh, your co-host, um, where you're basically, basically to the bathroom with him. You follow him because he has a drug addiction. You follow him every single where he goes. Tell us a little bit about your character and how what it took for you to get into that, into that mind frame to really, you know, play that role and be believable. You know, it's it's funny because uh, I play a gay character and I'm straight. Right. So it's funny because people would, you would always ask me, like, how is it playing a gay character? I was like, I'm playing a human being, which right. we all have needs, wants, you know. And, and so it's just, except this one, instead of implementing, no one ever says, how is the play heterosexual? Right. So the first thing is to don't come don't come with judgment because right. that's the limitation of the actor right. that has nothing to do with anything else so mm-hmm. I, I had no judgment on it and if you go into the story i mean you can see you know just these almost infatuation that becomes with this with this guy with following this guy around and being around him 24 7 right which is almost stemming from a need for love the same love that he wasn't getting from his parents mm. so you know and in the beginning you know he was still in the closet so i didn't i didn't i didn't think of myself my character at the point of being gay because he didn't he was still trying to find himself and right. he was just infatuated with this one person right so, um, you know, I just try to continuously make discoveries about the character and just not judge anything, let things play out, let the story play out until finally at the end he has a huge, uh, the season, the season finale, he had a huge confrontation with his yeah. and, and actually came out. It was um, uh, a lot, like a lot. Now, your mom in the scene played a crucial part, which I thought was very dramatic. Oh, you saw the scene? I, see, I watched the show. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So I saw the scene where you were in the, uh, it was you, your mom, and your dad inside of his office. And she was just like, you yeah. know, I didn't lost all these kids. You don't have a right to be gay. How do you feel yeah. about that? Because that was deep. That was a very, very Ooh. deep part to be able to have. And she played it. You know, big shout out. Oh, she also played Suge Knight in, in the uh, Color Purple on, on mm-hmm. Broadway. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that, but that was awesome. But Shug she Avery. played Suge Avery. I said Suge Knight. You in LA, play it Knight. comes out. <laughs> Ain't nobody playing Suge Knight just yet but sugar avery people were saying, like how did people <laughs> saying to me like how did you get so emotional in that scene i was like i listened did you hear what she was saying to me wow she did <laughs> yes she was no joke uh yeah she, i mean it was very cutting i think you know sometimes also um especially for for actors coming up one of the things that are really important so, and i remember i had a teacher once tell me this is sometimes it's not always what you're talking about that's important, but who you're talking to mm. that is important. So the fact that it was my mother just heightens it a hundred and ten percent because I mean that's your your parent. Most yes. adults we can go back to their childhood and it'll explain a lot of 
their behavior. Yes. You know, so that was a, a huge thing. And just to hear those things cutting, I mean, he just basically just put his put his heart out and put his, yes, uh, laid all his cards out. And, uh, you know, which was a huge thing. And then for it to get, for it to go down that way and for her to say such hurtful, as you know, those verbal wounds, are, I mean, are far deeper than physical ones. Oh, yeah. Mm. So, um, you know, uh, with that scene, and people were like, how did you, did they put, put teardrops in your eyes? Or did you, <laughs> right. I had no. Do you have some vibes? You know, I had no, I, I wasn't supposed to cry. I wasn't supposed to. It just, it came everything out. was real. That's what's everything up. Everything was real. And everything has to be real because if you don't believe it, they don't believe it. And if you have to, people, that's what people want to tune in to see is something real. They yes. want to they want to see and live vicariously through that. And I read a quote the other day. It was a quote by Sidney Poitier, and it said, acting isn't a game of pretend, but an exercise in being real. Yes. And um, it has to be because it, so, so one of the things that I think is more powerful in, in emotional scenes to fight back tears as opposed to have them, you know, just, but you, but you never want to make an appointment to right. cry. I mean, right. you know, if, if possible, because then it's, you know, you're manufacturing an emotion and you know, like gets into things that, like that. But I just think there were so many people who were like, Oh my gosh, I'm over here in tears. Mm. And that to me meant everything because whether people agreed or disagreed with that character's lifestyle they just felt compassion and sympathy towards a human being. Exactly. Mm. So play- and, and it's and, yeah. So playing a gay character that when it finally started coming out, how was that mm-hmm. for you? Did it feel real when you were saying these words like I love him and I want to be with him and and like how did that feel? Did it feel genuine to you n- not being that way? How did you relate? Uh it that. is because what what whatever substitution I have to make in my mind for it to be real, <laughs> it is <Right>. real. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> now so I mean that has to be strong, the mental focus for me. Yeah. And then it it, it is it is real. Mm. So and that's that's part of it. You know, sh- it, it has to. I have the final way for for it to be real for me. Right. Whether whether and you know, there's so many different ways. You know, with actors, some people you know, with substitution for me in that scene in that kind of a situation. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a substitution because it's funny because I think with, with, with actors, it's, it's, it's not even like everybody honing in. I got to find this technique and this technique and every teacher be like, Oh, this is the way. And then this is the way. And then it's this technique. We have everything we need. Right. What is, what is needed to be worked on is giving ourselves permission and access to go there right and so if you can Definitely. have that deeper connection which is only a deeper connection to yourself so that mm. you can go to those dark places and then we'll watch hmm. that we'll want to see as opposed to someone manufacturing something or playing a scene or or you know acting Wow. Yeah, I can definitely dig that. Go I ahead. was going to ask, I mean, have you gotten any letters from any people who watched the show who are gay, who were right. just definitely inspired by just that oh scene and for God. you coming or out? Or hate mail? <laughs> well, you know, for, well, they don't do letters anymore. Now it's just, <laughs> right, right, emails. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> or Twitter or right. Just so you know. Right. You, you, yeah, so, but. Um, no, well, yeah. I've gotten a ton. I mean, I probably still have, you know, over 200 and something emails uh, in Facebook still to read and still to look through. Wow. Uh, and Twitter just, I mean, it, it was off the charts with, with, with people commenting. I've had so many people saying, this is my life, or, oh, my gosh, my friend is going through this, or, oh, wow. you know, this is this is so many people just coming out. I mean, I, I've known people... I knew of, of one person who was, uh, I think he was 50 and been out for years, but he's been watching, he was watching it with his parents, and I think his mom was like, oh, so did you in high school know that you were gay? And he's like, what? We're having this conversation now? It just brought it to the surface. Wow. And uh, what better time? Because there's so many athletes that have recently yeah. been coming out, and, you know, and it's just, um, oh, so yeah, definitely definitely um, a lot of response from the gay community and for me it was just an honor just to have the responsibility and to be able to be the voice of a soul that needed to be heard 
in a story that needed to be told. That's fine. I find that very fascinating because a lot of people, when it comes down to their first role and it's a gay role or they're playing a gay character and they're not, sometimes they say, I don't want to step out in the industry necessarily like that. You know, you look at someone like even a Will Smith when he did the Six Degrees of Separation, people still think, you know, no matter whatever they heard, that they're still, you know, out there because he played the role so well. Do you think that this will follow you? Um, even though you're not, do you think this will be something that will continuously follow you in your career, being that you did play this role so well and have? That's a great, great, great question. Uh, because, you know, there's, I mean, my own, I was talking to my sister, she was telling me about people asking her, like, so is he, is he, he's gay. Is he, is he, is he, like, no, <laughs> now you got to defend yourself. Now right. you got to defend right. you. Right. Like that was acting. Dang, Hello. Right. right. He's an though, actor. Thought, you know, it's crazy because, I mean, I've, I played a murderer, but I didn't come home and be like, so are you a murderer Isn't in real that life? funny? You know. Wow. That's so funny. That, that makes is. sense. If you play a murderer, it's, no one, no one's asking, are you a murderer for real? But you pay, play a gay person and people are like, are you gay? How you doing? Yeah. How, how you doing? I, you know, I don't know. You know, it's so, it's so, um, so crazy that that happens. And, mm. you know, in the end, I just, I have to do what, what challenges me and yes. gives me the best opportunity for growth. I concur. And, you know, the industry is going to do what they want to do. Right. And, you know, to me, I mean, from, from what the people I've spoken to, they've they've definitely had a, a newfound respect because it was a challenge for right. me that I would be even open to go there because yeah. a lot of people wouldn't allow themselves permission to do that. And again, it's, 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 it's about, you know, and I don't want to have any limitations as an actor at right. all. So the things that I fear I want to be inspired to do and, and motivated to do. So, mm. uh, it's, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I, but I don't even worry about that because right. it means, uh, you know what I was watching today? I was watching, um, <sighs> it just came on. It was, uh, under the candelabra and it was a story of Liberace and uh, yes, Michael Douglas and Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're doing, right. and, you know, they're, they're at the, peak of their careers and you know they don't need to do things they don't need to do things that they would be uncomfortable but they obviously are doing this you know after already having such a great career because it still is a challenge to them and it Mm -hmm. still somehow gives them an opportunity for growth beyond themselves. To stretch and, themselves. Um, right. So we're going to be actually wrapping up pretty soon. So I, I definitely, of course, knowing that this is on OWN, not everybody gets opportunity to also be not only just touch Tyler Perry, but to also work with Miss Oprah Winfrey. Mm. Um, and I know she stopped sure. in a lot of times. Explain that moment really quick and what that means to you to to not only work with Tyler, but also to work with Miss Winfrey. How's that for you? It's been a blessing, and uh, it, 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 like I said, it, it could be nothing better in terms of working with two just great people, great figures, and just great role models. Uh, just meeting her, it was, it was, it was just so comfortable. It was almost like meeting a relative, like a, mm. like a family member. I hear and that's she the has one that effect on people, right. like that presence. Yeah, it just puts you at ease, and just very no- regular, just very, you know, just, just hug very her. normal people, very mm-hmm. caring people, very giving people. So that was just, uh, you know, that was just the icing on the cake. It was just, it, like I said, it just couldn't be a better work environment and, and two better people to work for. And Mr. Perry, I mean, have you had any fun conversations with him? Like Tyler was saying he's kind of schooled him to some things. I mean, did you get any particular uh, advice from Mr. Perry right. at all? Oh, we always, we all, I mean, we, it's a, like I said, it's a, it's a family. So I, I mean, I talk to him all the time and, you know, we always, uh, we respect each other and we always have fun. We always crack on each other and we always find opportunities to make jokes on mm. each other so like i said it's it's a it's a great working relationship it's, it's, a, it's a friendship as well and just a, a mutual respect all the way around so um awesome. yeah, it's just, and it's just great to be able to to have that and like i said just very normal very normal people Awesome. That's so fantastic. as we're wrapping this up, of course, I want to get into really fast, of course, what are the things that you have going on, if there's anything else outside of this. But before we do that, what is it that you know, uh, that sure. you know for sure, that you know for sure that you would give back to the audience um, and people that are coming up and grinding? And I know you've given a lot, but what would be the thing that pops on the top of your brain uh, that you know for sure? Never stop believing. If you believe it, you, you got to protect it. And Persistence overcomes resistance. Mm. That's what I always I say. can definitely dig that. And now, do you have a definition? Persistence overcomes resistance. Yes. For success, does, what does success look like for you? Is there a a picture of success for you? 
you know, um, I had a coach once used to always say, focus on achievement, not success, because success is someone else's opinion. And uh, I just want to achieve the goals that I set out for and just be one. able to l- leave someone's life a little bit different or changed in some way because of something that I've done and inspire actors coming up. Inspire actors coming up. Now, any other project that you're, projects that you're working on currently? I know there's season two coming. Anything else happening? <clears throat> Not at the moment. They, they, currently, I'm in Atlanta about to shoot season two. So this is my focus right now. And That's there's it. a couple of things we're looking at when it's over. But right now, this is the show and Raising the Bar on season two. Absolutely. Raising the bar. He's like, I'm focused, man. Focus. So now you work. Focus, man. Focus, man. You worked with the soap operas. And now do you can people I'm hearing a lot that this is a soap opera on own. This is a soap. Do you think, being that you've worked on a soap, is this like a soap opera for you? It's funny because I rejected that thought initially. And people are like, oh, okay, no, it is like so Because we had no clue what it was going to be like. Right. And, uh, I, yeah, I've worked in General Hospital. I've worked on Guiding Light. Um, this is faster than soaps, if, if it could ever, if there could ever be a certain thing. Um, this is boot camp. This mm. is, this is tough. <laughs> I've heard that. I could do it, so... It is, it is, so the fact of the matter of being able to do so much so quickly, right? it's just uh, ridiculous. So it's a lot tougher, I would say. Awesome. Now, how do we find you? How do we tweet, tweet you, Instagram, Facebook, social media? Facebook, ain't nobody sending no more letters. Right. I how mean, we get you, how bro? How we can bro. social <laughs> media <laughs> you? <laughs> maybe, maybe those people in Florida say <laughs> Right, right. I know. Oh, oh right. Oh, exactly. I I right. you one time about that. So, right. Okay. It's all so. good. We still friends. <laughs> we, we, we got love in the sunshine state. yes we do um i am on uh of course at uh gavin houston um in terms of the twitter and just facebook just search gavin houston and uh my uh fan page is there awesome that is Pretty what's up <laughs> that's what's up gavin man we just want to thank you so much for coming into the studio brother we just appreciate you so 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 much for coming in and keeping Thank it so you. real with us, brother. And uh, we just look forward to so many great things in your future and in yes, your career. Um, like I just shoot out many blessings to you and yes. your your and everything that Thank you do. You. you have such a warm spirit, man, and much, much, much success such a warm spirit. in the future. For thank you and you. thank you thank again you so for much. coming on the show and I look forward when you in the LA area let this be a friend of you because you know like exactly. I said we're doing big oh, things sure. over here so I'll still be your friend we should go watch right. the, the, guys, the Florida State UF game together you. let's get it go ahead go <laughs> you ahead you guys sound amazing thank and you I'm, I'm are so you just glad saying that, that this happened, no uh, I'm joking <laughs> and, and, uh, you guys are gonna be doing big things as you are already appreciate and, that and brother I love the chemistry you guys have together thank you it's been a blessing just being able to be here and talk to you. So thank you for having me. Well, no problem, brother. Holla we back appreciate at us when you, you back in town. Always when season welcome. two is done in the can. Let yes, us know. Yes, definitely, brother. And on that note, you take care of yourself we'll and you take care. OM Jizzle. Best thank of you, luck bro. with the season. So, uh, of course, as you know, um, that's it. It's 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 uh. Oh, now it's time to you say know, goodbye. It's time to uh, go on to some to other things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, try you know how how did you feel about everything? How 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 did everything oh, go for you? I Excited? I was just so touched. I mean, some of the stuff that he said and what he's gone through, it just just goes to show you that you can't get a win without some struggle. Right. You know, there's no victory without some struggle and without challenges. That's right. And to see what he's been able to overcome to get to where he is right now. Right. You know, they no story. If they wasn't no pain. That's right. I mean, it's just in order to get to the glory, they got to be a little bit of pain. So yeah, I agree. I'm just I'm really excited for him. And, you know, we had our friendly Justin. But really, I have a lot of respect for his talent yeah. and what he did. I definitely do, too, doing. because so many people get into that space to where it's hard and they want to give up. And they'll realize sometimes that next break is right on the other side of your pressure of that pain. That like some, we say, he could have given you. up. No agent, no, no manager. A- okay. He could have been like, I guess I'm not supposed to do this anymore. Yep. I guess I'm not going to make any money. And just the idea that he. He just kept persevering. He kept persevering. And now he's hanging out with Oprah and Tyler Perry. Okay. I mean, really, hello. Can hello. I be your friends, too? I mean, All right. We going. We getting we there. We in there anyway. We in there. It's right, 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 right. <laughs> they already in love with us. You know? Exactly. It's just, it's, just, it's timing. We, it's it's happening. timing. And everybody, you know how we always do. You know, you know, you know how we always do. We love you so much. Make sure that you're following us. Definitely make sure you're following us. We're on Twitter, first yes. of all. Can you want to talk about Twitter? I'm at Lazana. Yes. So I'm at L-A-S-A-N-A. <laughs> Holla at me on Twitter. Yes. 
Yes. And you're at Brookshire one two three. Very simple. That's it. And also Brookshire, of course one, Instagram two, RTW Instagram. Brookshire. Not on Instagram yet, but I'll be there soon. Come but on. y'all can holler at me on Facebook. It's just facebook.com backslash Lizanna online. You're so, uh, you're everywhere, Lizanna. I'm everywhere, like Lizanna, Lizanna online. Not too many Lizanna Smiths out there. Ain't no so. other Brookshire Lafayette. So Google me. <laughs> right. You know they used to have that on back of license plates and stuff. Like just Google me. I'm Google. Right. Right. We Google. Find me on Google. Hey everybody, we love you so much. We you love know you. You know that we love you so, so very much. And again, like we always do, like we always do, where your mind goes, where your mind goes, people, your, your body, body will follows. follow. Your body will follow. Remember, there's always another you on the other side of anything, anything that you're going through, good, bad, and different. I don't care if it's the best in the world. There's still going to be another you. If it's the worst in the world, there's still going to be another you waiting on you. Because when you grow through that process, you become a better person, stronger, more valuable, more, more, more smarter to be able to make better decisions as you move forward in your life. Life. Remember, everybody, we're here every Sunday, new time, 6 p.m., right here on LA Talk Live and Love923.com. I'm your main man, Mr. Brookshire. You know I love you so, 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 so much. Again, one more shout out, one more good thank you to Gavin Houston from the Haves and Half Not coming on the show. Of course, my beautiful co host, Miss Lazanna Smith. I love Hi. each and every single one of you. And like we always do until next week, I'll. Holla.